So I want to talk about transactional relationships as one of the many relationships that are out there. Okay. Welcome to my channel. Thank you for joining me today. I am Coach Kara and we are here with another relationship video. So have you ever heard of a transactional relationship? If not, more so than likely, you probably have seen one and just didn't know what it was. So um, yes, I want to you know give you a little bit more information on what that is like and the three more prevalent types of transactional relationships. And I'll give you some um, examples of what those may look like, okay? So as I was brainstorming this topic, um, one of the, the main type of transactional or more popular transactional relationships would be one to where two people come together, either they have a verbal agreement or they kind of transition into this sort of connection with expectations, expectations of reciprocation from each other. All right. And so while I was thinking about this topic, the couple that came to mind was, you know, Jocelyn Hernandez and Stevie J, you know, from the reality show Love and Hip Hop. This is a prime example of what a transactional relationship looks like. Okay, we have two individuals who both need a storyline for the show. Will you be my boo on the show? Yes, I will. Okay, that right there is an advantage. It is a financial advantage. Okay, secondly, CVJ is a music producer, a very well-known music producer. Jocelyn, you know, coming from the stripper pole, wanted to become or, you know, experience herself as a rapper. She needed that opportunity, a stepping stone. Stevie, when you gonna give me my record deal, da, 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 da. And that's what it became. As a result, they became as a duo, okay? A dynamic duo. And it was working until it wasn't. So with these type of transactional relationship, it's more like, a business arrangement it starts off that way and so what happens when one person begins to deviate and renege on promises of of their part of what they're supposed to do to you guess what happens big problems arises now we have two people with who are just as toxic AF come from not the best backgrounds and they come together and they battle it out because I'm trying to take, 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 and you're not giving, 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 and they clash. And that's exactly what happened. And if you were a watcher of the show, well, we all know how that ended. It didn't end well at all, okay? So that is a prime example of what one of the transactional relationships or lack thereof looks like, you know? Um, there really isn't any emotion that is brought about from it. It's all a facade. It's, that, that's really what that, that connection is. So next, the next connection that I want to talk about, and I actually came up with this one because I was watching an episode, a new episode from Catfish. You know, that's the only time I watch TV when it's related to relationships or basketball, of course. And this sort of connection is when one person is fully aware of what their intent is, you know, of what is going to transpire, but you have to find the right person. Whereas the other person, not so much, you know, so this young lady was on Tinder, you know, she found this guy, this young guy, these 20 year olds, they began to talk or whatever. So they get off Tinder and they just take it, you know, to phone messaging and, and, and calling and stuff. So that was the picture that he had, his little profile pic, that was all that she seen of him. Nothing else. No video chat, chatting, nothing, nada. Months go by, their communication increases, you know, sexting, sex talk, and then he begins to ask for things, you know, iPad, Playstations. Let's just say at the end of it all, $5,000 plus Later, within a year, she calls Catfish because something's amiss, something isn't right. And that's where they were, okay? So this guy, 
He was questioned, have you tried this with other people? Uh, I tried it at first with a couple others, but you know they weren't biting. But she took the bait. See, his intentions were selfish, of course. What's the take? He wanted to be a transaction. So him providing her with the attention, the communication, you know, sex talk, giving her everything she felt like she needed and, and wanted from a person, he was giving that to her. Like this was consistent and constant communication all day long. She explored her feelings and expressed them to just a voice and words. Never seen this individual, okay? Never seen him. Turns out he wasn't living hours away. He actually lived in the same city as her, Vegas, like right up the street, which is even more creepy. And, and I really began to feel there was something else going on with this guy because he had no emotional expression, really. What it was saying was just something that someone who did have remorse would say. Um, and it was quite puzzling to me, not only to me, but to you know the host as well. Like, what's going on with this guy? And when they asked him if he had a girlfriend, he said, yes, for a year. Do you give your girlfriend money? No. I take the money and I go shopping for myself. And that is when I realized what type of individual he was. He is in the making of becoming a malignant narcissist. They will take from you. They want all of your attention. They will suck you dry, consume you to where you think they're the only one that you need only to get what it is they need from you. It's the freaking worst type of situation you want to get yourself caught up into so they deleted the nude pics and all of that please guys if you're going to send nudies don't put your face in the pictures that's just common sense that was really stupid so she spent all of this time having dialogue and this emotional connection with just a voice and not realizing that she was in a transactional connection this guy was giving her what she wanted and he was taking what it is that he needed from her you see what I'm saying? And people, this happens every single day. This is why I do these types of awareness videos because people are out there doing this. These type, two types of people, not saying that she didn't have, you know, high esteem or, you know, confidence or whatever because she's in the process of becoming an entrepreneur. She just didn't know her worth and her value. And she, one day she finally woke up and realized something's off here. So what he was giving her was pipe dreams, you know? Smoke and mirrors. Tupac one says, pipe dream, make the night seem hopeless. So that's what he was giving her. And um, and that's how that ended. He, she never got her money back. She didn't have anything received. So she learned a very expensive lesson. So that is one transactional relationship. Now the next is one that we know all too well. We see it, not a lot, but we're, we're very aware of this kind of connect, connection. And it's a marriage transaction. And it's usually with two type of people who are, well, aware of what, they're, what they are to each other. And they go into the situation playing the part because it's beneficial. It's quite beneficial for both of them. And in other marriage transactions, you may see someone who may not want to be single anymore okay i want to become a wife i don't want to be a spinster i don't want to live with my parents and you've seen this sort of relationship quite often in common in the, the mid 1900s where the girl she would leave her parents and go off with this much older man and become his housekeeper his cook his baby maker and whatever else okay so that's transactional Anything that is not built upon and based off of emotions to grow into love, a real solid connection of getting to know each other internally and wholly, it's a situationship or a transactional relationship, period. Okay, a relational relationship is two people coming together, respecting each other with good intentions. Yes. All right. So what are the types of people who engage in these sorts of relationships, um, transactional relationships? Typically, 
selfish, conniving, and narcissistic people. They have an agenda. And typically, they, if they don't succeed in one connection, they transition into another. And they continuously do this until they get whatever it is that they're seeking. They just continue to take, take, take. And they find people who are like-minded, okay? It won't happen unless they find someone who is much like themselves, period. Okay, guys? So, yeah, I just wanted to share that video with you um, so that you're aware of these sorts of connection, which is why I implore you to ask questions, ask probing questions of one's intentions, and then check them on that. Look for whatever they say they're going to do. Expect that. Expect nothing less. Okay? All right. Well, if you need further dating, coaching, and a relationship advice, all of my information will be linked down below. As always, I thank you for joining me. Until next time.